Thanks for joining us for tonight's launch of the Y-1B spacecraft aboard an ILS Proton from Launch Pad 39 in Baikonur, Kazakhstan. The Y-1B launch aboard the ILS Proton is a collaborative effort between ILS, International Launch Services, satellite operator al Yas Satellite Communications Company, known as Yasat, and spacecraft manufacturers Talus Alenia Space and Astrium. Let me now introduce my co-host, John Palme, Deputy Vice President for Mission Assurance at ILS. He has worked on 12 launch campaigns from Baikonur, and on this is your sixth time co-hosting launch broadcast, so welcome, John. Thanks, Jennifer. It's great to be uh, co-hosting today's uh, launch broadcast, and it's great to be on the other side of the camera for a change, as I've been in Baikonur for five of the last six ILS launches. Well, we are happy to have you back. Well, let's take our first look at the Y-1B satellite aboard an ILS Proton and get a report on the weather conditions. John? Well, Jennifer, as you see here, Y-1B is ready to launch aboard an ILS Proton from Launch Pad 39 in Area 200 of the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The Proton is specifically designed to launch in most weather conditions, including extreme hot and extreme cold. There are very few weather conditions that could cause a delay in a Proton flight. Uh, the current weather readings at the Baikonur Cosmodrome indicate that we are within range limits for liftoff. And at last check, we had mostly clear skies, a liftoff temperature range of 10 to 13 degrees Celsius, which is about 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Ground winds were out of the east at 6 to 9 meters per second and the upper level winds when last measured were within limits at all altitudes. So weather conditions are ideal and currently we are go for launch. Thank you, John. And now a little information about today's launch. This will be the 376th Proton Proton launch overall since Proton's first flight in 1965 and the 72nd ILS Proton launch. This will be the third ILS Proton launch of 2012. SES-4 was launched successfully on February 14th, and Intelsat-22 launched successfully on March 25th. The satellite operator for today's launch is Yasat, headquartered in Abu Dhabi, United em Arab Emirates. This will be Yasat's first satellite launched on an ILS Proton. The satellite manufacturers are Astrium, headquartered in Paris, France, and Thalassolania Space, headquartered in Cannes, France. This is the 14th Eurostar satellite launched on an ILS Proton. Launch is set for 6.18 p.m. on April 23rd here at the ILS Broadcast Center in Washington, D.C., which is 4.18 a.m. in Baikonur on April 24th. Right now, final preparations are in motion by the Y-1B mission team. Now, John, tell us a little bit about the Y-1B. Certainly, Jennifer. Um, Y-1B is the first ILS Proton launch with Yasat and will deliver communications in KA band for both commercial and governmental users. It will provide high data rate internet services for public and private users in the Middle East, Africa, and Southwest Asia, above the limitations of some of the existing terrestrial and satellite systems there. This high data rate internet service is called Yaklik and will offer customers in those areas uninterrupted high speed internet usage from the moment Y1B goes live. Y1B's commercial communication payload uses state of the art KA band multi spot beam technology achieving cost effective bandwidth supply through 61 narrow, beams, narrow spot beams. Y1B weighs more than 6,000 kilograms at launch and will be located at 47.6 degrees east longitude. The ILS Proton mission for the Y-1B satellite will take 9 hours and 12 minutes from liftoff to injection into geostationary transfer orbit. Now let's take a look at the mission profile for Y-1B. The following is the description of the geostationary transfer orbit mission flight profile of the ILS Proton launch vehicle with the Y-1B communication satellite on board. The first three stages function to propel the orbital unit to a suborbital trajectory. The orbital unit consists of the Breeze-M, payload adapter system, and the Y-1B satellite. The sequence starts with the ignition of the powerful first stage engines that output 2.4 million pounds of thrust at sea level, which is equivalent to the thrust power of nine Airbus 380 commercial jets at takeoff. As the ILS Proton lifts off from its launch pad, it immediately executes a roll maneuver to align its flight launch azimuth to 61.3 degrees in order to achieve a parking orbit inclination of 51.5 degrees as it travels eastward. 
The engines fire for about two minutes, during which time the ILS proton experiences maximum dynamic pressure. Then the first stage separation occurs. The second stage engines follow with nearly 540,000 pounds of thrust for 3.5 minutes. And then the third stage engine fires with 131,000 pounds of thrust for four minutes. The payload fairing is separated soon after third stage ignition, high above the Earth's dense atmosphere. At stage three separation, the orbital unit has traveled from Baikonur to Russia near the eastern edge of Kazakhstan at 51.5 degrees north latitude and is moving about 7,300 meters per second or 4.5 miles per second relative velocity. The upper stage of the ILS proton rocket is called the Breeze-M and is designed to inject payloads into a wide variety of target orbits. The first Breeze-M burn occurs about 1.5 minutes after the third stage separation when the orbital unit is still in a suborbital trajectory. This will last long enough to achieve a low Earth circular parking orbit of 173 kilometers. This 4.5 minute burn spans from Siberia to Russia's east coast. The second Breeze M burn centers the ascending node of the first orbit. The resulting elliptical orbit is called the intermediate orbit. This 17.7 minute burn spans from South Atlantic, 800 miles east of Rio de Janeiro, to Libya. A little over two hours after the second burn, the third Breeze M burn starts. Soon after this burn shuts down, the depleted auxiliary propellant tank is jettisoned, and the fourth Breeze M burn begins. The resulting orbit is called the transfer orbit where the apogee is greatly increased to closely match the geosynchronous altitude. These two burns add up to 17.4 minutes and span from South Pacific, 200 miles west of Santiago, Chile, to 400 miles west of Morocco. During the coast phases, the Breeze M performs attitude maneuvers in order for the Y-1B solar arrays to be exposed to the sun at a predetermined solar illumination angle which is designed to satisfy its thermal and power requirements. During the fifth and final Breeze M burn, the orbital unit will perform a large plane change maneuver at apogee in the descending node from 49 degrees to 23.8 degrees inclination and increase its perigee to about 3,900 kilometers in a six minute burn. About 12.5 minutes later, the Y-1B satellite is separated from the Breeze-M to reach its targeted geostationary transfer orbit. The total mission time from launch to Y-1B spacecraft separation is approximately 9 hours and 12 minutes. The first burn of the Breeze-M upper stage is scheduled for completion about 16 minutes into the flight. Our broadcast will conclude after this burn since the rocket will be out of range of our tracking stations for over an hour and we will not receive any updates during that time. But remember, you can stay up to date on the Y-1B mission by visiting the ILS website, ILSlaunch.com, by following us on Twitter, and by liking us on Facebook. Now, let's take a moment to hear from the President of International Launch Services, Frank McKenna, who was interviewed with the CEO of YASAT, Tarek al Hosani. Talis Alania Space President and CEO, Reynald Sesnek, and Eric Berenger, CEO of Astrium Services. In 2012, ILS and Kurnachev will complete a very rapid launch rate. This will be our third commercial mission for the year. And just last month, we launched two protons within one week. That was a commercial proton and a federal proton. This has been accomplished by investing in the second processing facility. This has allowed us to process multiple spacecraft simultaneously and create a capability that the industry desires and creates great value for them. ILS is very proud to be selected to launch the YASAT 1B mission. The Y1B is our second satellite, and like the first satellite, it's a hybrid mission. Which will be a dual use mission, both for the commercial program for YASAT as well as the UAE military. Which uh, applies the new advanced technologies of frequency reuse, multi spot beams 
which is considered to be a high throughput satellite, it will be providing services to 27 countries in the Middle East, Southwest Asia and Africa. The YASAT program is a fully integrated satellite communication system comprising the Y1A and Y1B satellites and the associated ground segment. Now, YASAT-1B is to build on that success. It will complete the telecommunication system. It will extend the civil mission and also offer services to private and public users in the Middle East, Africa and West Asia. The uniqueness of Y1B comes into the new technology that we are applying within the satellite and the ground systems to be able to bring broadband internet at a reasonable cost to our consumers. Today, for YASAT, Astrium has built, in collaboration with its partners, the most advanced military and commercial telecommunication satellite system. The Yaclik business will introduce broadband across the region and the satellite serves the military purposes as well for communications capability and connectivity around the globe, which is a tremendous service. The YASAT advanced system is a product of a winning team of partners. At Thales Alenia Space, we are proud to be part of it alongside Yassat, Mubadala, the UAE Armed Forces, and our colleagues at Astrium and at Thales Communications and Security. After spending three years building the satellite, you want to make sure to launch it safely and correctly. Uh, ILS team, through their professionalism, uh, attention to details, and quality process, were a great partner and we thank them for that and uh, we are very proud with the relationship that we developed together to reach this successful day inshallah. Welcome to the live broadcast of the ILS Proton launch of the Yasat 1B satellite for Al Yas Satellite Communications Company, or Yasat. Yasat is wholly owned by Mubadala Development Company, a strategic investment arm of the government of Abu Dhabi. Yasat designed the region's first hybrid satellite system and was the first fixed satellite operator established from the UAE. This is the third launch of the year for ILS Proton and the fourth Proton launch in less than three months. This is also our first launch with YASAT and the 72nd ILS Proton launch overall. YASAT 1B is the 14th Eurostar satellite launched on an ILS Proton. The dual use satellites platform was developed by Astrium and the payload by Talis Alenia Space. YASAT 1B will deliver communications in KA band to serve both commercial and government users. So if you're watching us in Abu Dhabi, in Cannes or Toulouse, France, or if you're with our team watching live at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, I have one final message for the Yasat 1B mission. Go Proton, go Breeze M, go Yasat 1B. Well, we are a little less than four and a half minutes away from liftoff of the Y-1B satellite. Now, the Proton rocket is able to lift very heavy payloads into orbit. Proton launched Russian interplanetary missions to the Moon, Venus, Mars, and Halley's Comet. Proton also launched the Salyut space stations, the Mir core segment, and both the Zarya, which means dawn, and Zvezda, meaning star, modules for today's International Space Station. Proton is a powerful rocket with 1.5 million pounds of thrust. Let's take a moment now to learn more about the development of the Proton. The Proton launch vehicle is the backbone of the Russian space industry with a long and significant history. Here are some quick facts. The Proton is the largest and most powerful Russian launch vehicle in operation. It has been launched more than 350 times since the mid-1960s. Krunichev Research and Production Space Center, the majority owner of ILS, is one of the pillars of the Russian aerospace industry and manufactures both the Proton rocket and the Breeze M upper stage. While the first Proton mission was in July of 1965, the first commercial Proton launch took place almost 30 years later in April of 1996. The UR-500 vehicle's first three payloads were spacecraft called Proton 1, 2, and 3, and subsequently, the launcher was named after its original payload. Krunichev manages federal launch missions while ILS offers the Proton for commercial satellite launches. 
There are about seven to eight commercial missions a year and three to five federal missions, launching at a rate of about one per month. The Y-1B mission team for this ILS Proton launch is made up of representatives from ILS, YASAT, Khrunichev State Research and Production Space Center, and manufacturers, Talisalania Space and Astrium. Here's a message from ILS Y-1B Program Director, Russ Pritula. Hello, bonjour and privyet from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. I'm Russ Pritula, the ILS Program Director for the YASAT 1B mission. This is the first of four launch campaigns that I will support this year. While it was certainly a challenge to initiate this campaign, now that we're here, I'm amazed at how well everything has progressed. We have a rather complex team structure for this particular program, but all of the teams have meshed together in a very collaborative manner. I believe that our contractual customer, Talus, and our end customer, Yasat, are both pleased with the execution of this launch campaign. While we arrived in Baikonur at the tail end of the wintry weather, on St. Patrick's Day to be exact, we have really enjoyed the transition into springtime, and in fact, uh, summertime as it feels right now, and we've been able to observe the local landscape as it comes back to life in its own special way. Let me take this opportunity to offer my sincere appreciation to all of the teams involved in this launch effort, and we hope we will be working with this customer many more times in the future. In summary, this time in Russian, Vpirot Proton, Vpirot Prizem, Vpirot Yasat. All right, we are going to the launch shortly. We're going to take you there in just a moment. Now, John, you were telling us that conditions are perfect today, aren't they? Yeah, the weather conditions are very nice uh, for the launch. It's a, a clear night, so uh, we expect the teams down in Bike North should be able to uh, observe the launch uh, as it heads uh, downrange in a northeasterly direction. Now, John will take us through the final pre launch preparations and through liftoff of Y1B. John? Looking at a live shot at uh, Baikonur, today's launch of the Y1B satellite on ILS Proton is a re result of an accumulation of a lot of hard work and long hours uh, from everybody on the launch team. And they're all eagerly awaiting the liftoff um, in their places in the control rooms, in the bunker, ground stations, and comm centers. And the final poll, go for launch polling, as we mentioned earlier, is being completed at this time. T minus 15, coming up on T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We should start with a liftoff of an ILS proton rocket from the Baikonur Concert Drone in Kazakhstan with the Y1B satellite on board. At about 10 seconds after liftoff, the rocket does do a roll maneuver and will soon experience maximum dynamic pressure or max Q. Max Q is the maximum aerodynamic load on the vehicle and it corresponds to about Mach 1.6 and occurs one minute, two seconds after liftoff. Everything seems to be proceeding nominally as the vehicle heads in an easterly direction with a flight azimuth of about 61.3 degrees. We're coming up on the first stage separation from the second stage, and that is set to occur at two minutes into the flight. In addition to those at the launch site, there are many others watching who have played an important role in the Y-1B mission, and, and that includes uh, um, the people at ILS headquarters in Reston, Virginia, uh, Krunichev in Moscow, uh, Yasat in Abu Dhabi, uh, Talis Alenia Space in Cannes, France, uh, Astrium in Paris, France, and many others who have helped to make Y-1B a, a reality. And we have confirmation of a good separation between the first and second stages. The second stage actually, uh, engines actually ignite while the is still attached to the first stage. And the exhaust from those engines escapes through the open grid work between those stages. And it looks like we have a signal of ignition on all four second stage engines. They will burn for a total of about 3 minutes and 27 seconds. The next key mission milestone will be the stage 2-3 separation at L plus 5 minutes and 27 seconds. And 20 seconds later, the payload fairing halves will jettison.